Experiment 21 in Chem 1212 is titled The Thermodynamics of Borax Dissolution. And this experiment ties together a lot of the concepts and techniques we've been learning about throughout the semester in Chem 1212. The ultimate goal is to determine delta G, delta H, and delta S for the dissolution of borax, or sodium borate, in water. To do this, we're going to exploit the relationship between equilibrium and the equilibrium constant and thermodynamics and these thermodynamic parameters, delta G, delta H, and delta S. In addition, we're going to apply the technique of titration multiple times to get precise results and learn how to apply titration data and results to the determination of an equilibrium constant. So let's begin by discussing solubility equilibria in general and talk about the system we'll study in this experiment, borax and water, or sodium borate. So we can represent borax sort of pseudochemically as Na2 borate. It's a salt consisting of two sodium cations and the borate 2 minus anion. And in its pure form, it's a solid powder. But when we add sodium borate to water, it dissolves to form two aqueous sodium plus ions and the borate 2 minus anion also aqueous. And this is an equilibrium. Solid can dissolve to form aqueous ions, and aqueous ions can precipitate to form solid. The equilibrium constant associated with these forward and reverse processes is known as KSP, or the solubility product constant. By now you should be familiar with the idea that we do not include the solid reactant in the equilibrium expression for KSP because it's a solid and its concentration doesn't really change. Its concentration is really just its molar volume. And so we can write an equilibrium expression for the reaction that's shown here. And I would encourage you to pause the video and take a couple of moments to do that before I reveal it. In this case, Ksp is equal to the equilibrium concentration of Na plus squared times the equilibrium concentration of borate 2 minus. Now let's imagine that our goal, as it will be in this experiment, is to determine Ksp. The first step in doing this is to prepare a saturated solution of sodium borate in water. This is easy enough to do. We just keep adding solid borax until we end up with some borax in the bottom after a sufficiently long time, something like 10 or, or 15 minutes. This guarantees that the water above the solid has as much dissolved sodium plus and borate 2 minus in it as can possibly go in at the temperature of the solution. The key question we need to answer about this saturated solution is how much borate anion actually dissolved. And note that since the concentrations of borate and sodium cation are related by stoichiometry, once we know the concentration of borate in this saturated solution, we can calculate the equilibrium concentration of dissolved sodium fairly easily just by doubling the concentration of borate. With those in hand, we simply square the sodium concentration and multiply by the borate concentration to get back to Ksp. And notice that what we're interested in here are concentrations, molarities, ratios of moles to liters. So we don't necessarily have to study the entire saturated solution. We can take out what's called an aliquot from this solution, something like only 5 or 10 milliliters of liquid. The concentrations of sodium and borate in that tiny aliquot are the same as the overall concentration in the entire saturated solution because concentration is intensive. It doesn't depend on the volume of the solution and it's uniform throughout. We'll talk a little bit later in the video about how exactly to determine the concentration of borate in this aliquot. But before getting there, I want to talk about how we're going to relate Ksp to thermodynamics and a little bit about the link between thermodynamics and equilibrium. Thermodynamics is really the study of systems in equilibrium. And so there's a fundamental link between equilibrium and equilibrium constants such as Ksp and changes in thermodynamic state functions like delta G, delta H, and delta S. And in particular, changes in these functions for standard states, which we denote with the little circle in the upper right of each quantity. The deltas here refer to a change in state and what we're interested in when it comes to Ksp is the process of dissolution, the process of the solid forming aqueous ions. Once we understand the nature of this connection between Ksp and these thermodynamic parameters, we can actually use measurements of Ksp, which are fairly easy to do using analytical techniques, to determine these thermodynamic parameters. And this provides a way, for example, to validate 
the theory of thermodynamics, validate things like tabulated heats of formation, tabulated free energy changes, tabulated entropies, that sort of thing. So let's do a little bit of mathematics to see exactly how this connection between Ksp, delta G, delta H, and delta S actually works. So let's begin with an equation that comes out of the law of mass action. Negative R, the ideal gas constant, times T, the temperature, times the natural log of Ksp is equal to the standard delta G for dissolution. We can expand the right-hand side using the definition of delta G as delta H minus T delta S, both their standard values. Let's divide both sides by negative RT and collect the terms a little bit. So the natural log of Ksp on the left is equal to, on the right, negative delta H over R times 1 over T. And you'll see in a moment why I'm writing natural log of Ksp and 1 over T in blue, plus delta S over R. The form of this equation may look a little bit familiar if you think back to the kinetics experiment. On the left, we have the natural log of something, and on the right, we have some constant times 1 over t plus some other constant. There's an analogy here to the Arrhenius equation, and in particular, if we think of the natural log of Ksp as y and 1 over t as x, we see that those two quantities appear to have a linear relationship in this equation, y equals mx plus b, where the slope is negative delta h over r, and the y-intercept is delta s over r. So let's look at this graphically. If we plot 1 over t, the independent variable, on the x-axis, and the natural log of ksp, the dependent variable, on the y-axis, we should expect to get a line. Now one important difference between this and the Arrhenius plot that we generated in the kinetics lab is that the slope and the y-intercept may be positive or negative depending on the signs of delta H and delta S. In any event, fitting our experimental data to a line will give us values for the slope and intercept, which will allow us to calculate experimental values for delta H and delta S. Think about comparing these values to delta H and delta S calculated from standard entropies and delta H's of formation, which you should be familiar with from 1211. In addition, consider the process of dissolution, and in particular whether you would expect the change in entropy especially to be positive or negative for a dissolution process. Finally, let's talk about exactly what we're going to do in the lab with this 5 milliliter aliquot of saturated sodium borate solution to determine the concentration of borate. So the first thing we're going to do with it is add to it a pH indicator. This is a basic solution, so the indicator is going to assume its basic form and its basic color initially. We're going to use titration to consume the borate ion using an acid, specifically HCl. The exact concentration of the HCl will be known from a standardization experiment. We've applied standardization before, and the idea here, as it was before, is to determine a precise value for the HCl concentration, ultimately relying on the precision of a balance we use to measure out a solid base that we titrate with the HCl. In this experiment, it'll be sodium carbonate. We'll add the HCl dropwise, as in any titration, and measure the volume of HCl solution required to reach the end point. At the end point, the indicator will change color, since we'll have gone from a basic to an acidic solution, and all of the borate 2 minus anion will have been consumed by HCl. The chemical equation here is two moles of HCl react with one mole of sodium borate to form products, and really the intricate details of the products are not necessary. All you need to know is that the products are acidic while the reactants are basic, and as soon as all of the borate is consumed, the indicator will change color. So from the known HCl concentration and VHCl, we can calculate the borate 2 minus concentration, and using the equilibrium expression in the process we discussed before, we can get back to Ksp. Ultimately, we'll do this at three different temperatures, use the collected data on a plot of natural log of Ksp versus 1 over temperature, and determine delta G, delta H, and delta S for the dissolution of borax or sodium borate.